and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Where we Your unto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenlies. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. First of all, we thank you for safe journey. Thank you for bringing us to U.S. In this summer of 2013, to explore the world, the riches, and the glory of your kingdom. Father, these things cannot be understood by flesh and blood. These are revelation knowledge based understanding. These are things you heed for our glory. No one can lay hold of these truths and remain ordinary. No one can truly possess them and be defeated in life. This morning I pray, not only for this morning session, but throughout this weekend, that you will pour forth the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Pour forth such insight in this place that no life will be left the same. Every life will be transformed and altered. Father, let your kingdom come. Let your glory be revealed that every eye will see it. We turn into motion the forces of revelation. We activate here in this place in Atlanta the power of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son, we activate the forces of dominion. We turn them into motion right now. Father, from this minute, let this atmosphere be surcharged with your heavenly presence. Let us be granted a divine excursion. Let us be taken out of the earth realm into your realm where we will see and have an encounter with the amazing wonders of God. Take us into this supernatural excursion these four days or three days we're going to be here. Infuse us with divine software. Equip us with everything we need to take charge in our world, to take charge in our territories, to possess this nation for you. Equip us with whatever we need to take care of our nations. We've come from Africa, from Canada, from U.S., from New York, from different parts. Some came from Virginia and so on. Break the barrier that has held us back from becoming all you have planned for us to be, all that you created us to be. Lift up your hands, everyone. There is an anointing for dominion. It's not just in words, it's in power. I don't mind telling you that that anointing is on my life. I will not be able to do or accomplish the kind of things that are going on without it. I release that anointing upon your life. We activate the, the anointing for dominion. We activate an anointing upon your life. God has called you to be a king and he has called you to be a priest. We release the anointing for reigning, the anointing for functioning in that office. Wonderful Holy Spirit, we enter into full partnership with you, into divine partnership with you to accomplish the plan and purpose of the Father in this place. Let all the angels that are assigned to minister to us this weekend be released. Let them be turned into motion. Father, let nothing be held back. Let your mighty arm be made bare that every eye will see it. Let this conference unleash an army of giants, an army of spiritual giants, an army of intellectual giants, an army of men and women that will go and take possession of their land and take possession of the nations. If you can pray in the spirit, pray a little. Kamurobola, kabia kabolokos, vebami kipoko prokopaya korosuma yalala. 
Ventoro koparula kabosh akabreke payaya. Leto no mo sungre de kabai. Sunumbro de kalan surposast. Zuprende de koposande de kubosusis. Brando Koborosta Vadekilemo Hoshindis Alla Kabondo Suris Kalashesos Kombrodus of Abasinde Kayars. We unleash the power of the kingdom in this place. We unleash the power of the kingdom in this place. We unleash the power of the kingdom in this place. Kobodo kirabundo mo sumara la la kien toboro sobre kisha la cast Hallelujah. The message God has sent us to US with this season is the message of the dominion the dominion mandate. We had an instruction from heaven to revisit this subject. This is actually the core message or purpose of Dominion City as a ministry. This is our core assignment to give this message to the world and to bring about the consequences of bringing about that, of delivering that message. There are consequences that come along with it. You cannot know this and be poor, for example. You cannot know this and be defeated by demons. You cannot know this and be, de and be defeated by sickness. You cannot know this and not excel in life. It's not possible. You cannot know this and not be the head. You cannot have this software in you and be the tail. It's not possible. You may have heard me say this. Take everything I have. Take everything. Leave me with my Bible. Drop me in a desert. I will turn it into an oasis. There is a software that is inside me. I've come to U.S. to transfer a technology. A kingdom technology. 
if you get it, and I'm going to say some things because this is introductory sec section, I'm going to say some things, I'm going to advise you. Write everything you can, but get the tapes. So let me share the scripture and give you an overview. And then every session now, I'm going to take one component of it because if I talk to you from now, <laughs> till the end of the year I will not repeat myself I will be dealing with just the dominion mandate and because of the components but I'm going to show you this building in a way that you will be able to get it is built developed like a house let's look at the scripture first Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, now, this is where God declared his intention for creating man. That program has not changed. The Bible, your Bible, declares that the purpose of God is unchanging. The purpose of God is eternal. Those two words. One said that there is the unchanging nature of God's counsel. That God's counsel is immutable. God is not like the person who changes his mind every morning. What changes in the program of God are the methods that God uses at every dispensation. But the purpose that he has set his mind. Because purpose is setting the end from the beginning. God had one end he set when he was creating man. There were problems along the way. Man fell, but the program was still there. Now he sent a redeemer to redeem man, but the program is still there. After our deviation and the correction, God's plan is to finally get us to that purpose. And that purpose is that man will have dominion. This is so serious that when we preach about going to heaven, we better realize that we are not going to stay in heaven for more than seven years. God had no plan from day one to put us in heaven. The place he created for man is earth. That is why when he finally destroys the earth, he has created another earth. Because our place is not in heaven. That's why you should not be in a hurry to die. Dead should come after your fulfilled purpose. I don't mind telling you that all these people that are in heaven, including my dad that joined them not long ago, there is nothing they are doing now. They attend worship service, they eat good food, they enjoy paradise. One day I read my Bible, the Bible said, the souls of them that were slain, we are now harassing God. When are you going to Judge the earth so that we can come back and start raining. What, what, what do I do here? The people in heaven are like Prince, Prince Charles. You cannot smell the throne until the queen dies. The queen of England. I respect the monarchy. I, I think they are one step ahead of the U.S. in that area. Democracy needs a center of control. Too much freedom is not good. Freedom without some form of control leads to bondage again. So the type of democratic freedom we have now is bringing us into bondage. I'm told that every, whether it's every day or every week, a child in America is attempting suicide. Is it every? So in minutes now, somebody is trying to kill himself here. I don't know how the time interval it takes for another person to walk into a classroom or a school and start shooting. Liberty. The, the car that brought me here, the speed limit, uh, the, the extreme end of the speed limit, I was trying to look at your distance. I was like, what? 220. Can you imagine? 220. You can go 220. That car has capacity to go to 20. But I saw you just going around 60. 
Why are you not going to 20? Because you will join Paul in heaven. That's what liberty, that 220 is freedom. But if you exercise it, it sends you to prison, sends you to bondage. That's if you're not dead, you will be, your leg will be hanging in the orthopedic hospital. Your neck might be hanging. And that might be two years of imprisonment with hard level. For exercising unrestrained freedom. So the manufacturers put brake control. They put steering control. So that freedom can be restrained. You know why every time I come to America, I see people that are four times their fellow human beings. That is four human beings in one body. Especially around your New York. I know they're in Atlanta, but Atlanta is, is holy for now. <laughs> let's, let's pretend they're not here. But Then you see them. They're struggling to walk. But then they walk into McDonald's and guess the type of burger they order again, the king size. And guess what they take it with? Large size of Pepsi or Coke. You see, the freedom has put the man in prison. He is now imprisoned in his own body. Yet, because America is a land of freedom. That is not how your founding fathers did it. If you also notice sexual freedom, you can sleep with a chimpanzee, with, you can sleep with a dog, you can sleep with your mattress. But the manufacturer of the human body put restraint. He put brakes. He put... And you tear off the brake. You say you don't want that. Religion is trying to inhibit us. Morality is trying to keep fun away from life. You know, you tear off the, the brake from your car. You take the steering from your car and remove it. Say they are trying to stop me from having fun. I want to speed. Depending on the direction you are going, you either meet in Jamaica faster or meet Lucifer faster in hell. The danger now is that unrestrained power and does not only destroy the person that has it, it destroys other people alongside. Because when an accident occurs, other lives are destroyed. And that's what is happening with sexual freedom. It's my body. I do what I like with it. Don't tell me what to do. God gave me all this asset so I can use it. But there is right use of asset. There is a way you use your, your resources. You liquidate it. There is abuse and there is use. Amazingly, you cannot have dominion until you first have self-dominion. Until you have self-government, you are not qualified to govern anybody. What God planned is that power must be under control. Power must be restrained. Freedom must be restrained. Then freedom can become profitable. Okay, let's look at that scripture. So God declares his purpose for creation of man. And he declares three, what we call, mission statements. Three of them. Number one, God wanted to have children. That was his first purpose. 
the first purpose of man's creation is that God wanted to have an offspring. And he wants us to be like him. He wants man to be his image. He wants man to be his image. It's amazing. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6 and 7. Please, if you can project it, I'll show them fast and come back. Okay, let's just pick verse 7. It will make it bold. You know, for, for man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and the glory of God. So it's not just that we are made in the image of God. We are the image of God. We are the image of God. Say it with me. I am the image of God. Then the other one said, I am the glory of God. He is the image and the glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. Now, what's the meaning of that? Is the woman the image of God? Yes. But when a woman marries a man, because that's the discussion here, marriage, oh, it's not just every woman is the glory of any man. No. When a woman marries a man, that woman too becomes the glory of her husband. We'll, we'll see if we can get to that part later, the glory side. But let's talk about image now. Uh, say it again. I am the image of God. The number one reason for my creation is that God made me as a reflection of himself. Uh -huh. If you are going to function in dominion, you have to build it from foundation up. Okay, let's go back. Genesis chapter, chapter 1, verse 26. Now, you can see the stuff is like this. Okay, this part is the foundation. Foundation. That is the part that goes on the ground. It's inside the ground, like the foundation of this building. You don't see the foundation, but that's what carries everything. This is the building. This is the roofing. After this tree, there is one more thing about building. It's the finishing and the furnishing. Now, I, I decided to leave that out because that is the result of dominion. Prosperity is part of it. Good health is part of it. And so on and so forth. But if you build these three foundations and in this order, remember the order. This is the number one. It, <laughs> it's the most important. Then number two, then number three, the result is you're going to have dominion. So, what is the foundation? I just told you, the divine image. The divine image. We also call it the divine nature. The divine nature. Because every one of you must have this software in you, and you must help carry it to the world. May I backtrack to say this? The, universe, the, the dominion mandate is the creation mandate. So every man created by God is actually called to carry this mandate. The fall of man has robbed majority of mankind of this calling. But... God's plan in sending, the, in activating or putting into motion the redemptive program is to get us back here. God's plan in sending Christ is to get us back here. So there are two Adams in man's destiny. The first Adam that caused the fall. The second Adam that brought about the restoration and the redemption. The plan of Jesus, that's why when he Came, he started talking about the kingdom. That's what he came to into. He's talking about that dominion mandate.
He said, what I brought is the gospel of the kingdom. That the mandate, the rulership, the authority given to man, which was lost, is back on earth. Okay, there are three purposes for the creation of man. We are trying to trace them. Now, let us make man in our image. The second purpose is he must function in our likeness. Then the third is for them to have dominion over creation. So, the second, which is the building itself, is what we call the divine functionality. The divine functionality is the likeness of God. God made us in his image and made us to function like him. That's the divine functionality. Now, some of you, when you read your Bible, you say God made us in his image. After I like it, you think the scripture is doing tautology. That is repetition. There is no meaningless details in the Bible. Say it. God is not the type of person that keeps repeating things. No. The three mission statements are clear. The problem is understanding it. What exactly is he talking about? The divine functionality, we also call it the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. There are other languages used when it's being described in the scripture. Now, we are made in the image of God. We have the DNA of God. We have the nature of God. But now, we are designed to function like God. The implication of that is that we must also get the software of God. A computer made um, an image of uh, Intel or an image of, um, I'm looking for some of these companies, Samsung. You know, usually Samsung has one model somewhere that you make. Before you start mass, mass producing anything, you create a model. Then you duplicate every other thing according to the image of that model. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? An example is uh, franchising, which is common in the U.S. You create one model of a business, like uh, McDonald's, for example, and then every other branch, every other one must follow the image of the original model. But God said, apart from having the DNA, you also need the software. You need the wisdom of God. You need to know how to function like God. How does God function? Because this creature is a God-like being. This creature called man is a God-like being. So he needs to be taught how to also function like God. If you teach him that, the result is that he is going to have dominion. The last, the last purpose of man's creation is the dominion mandate. God, God's third and final purpose for man is for man to have dominion over creation. The kingdom mandate. What exactly is that? God is a king. He is raising a family of loyalties, of kings and priests. And the ultimate plan he has is that each one of them will go and rule in one sphere of life or the other. The whole thing about the dominion mandate is about a royal family. 
the king and his children. And the children, like the father, are born to rule. I don't mind pausing at that moment and letting you know you are from the lineage of loyalty. You are from a royal family. You are the king's kid. You are born to rule. I say you are born to rule. You are not an ordinary person. You are not like the average man in the street. There is something different about you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? I love how Peter said it. He said, you are a chosen generation. You can project it for the first Peter chapter 2, I think it's verse 9. Yeah? You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A peculiar people. A holy nation. There are about four words, about five words used there to describe us. Called out people. The Greek people call it ecclesia. Called out of the darkness of this world with one purpose. To reveal the glory of God to the nations. To reveal the praises of him who saved us to the world. A choosing generation. A royal. You are from a royal family. The royal blood flows in your vein. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? And you know, I like how one translation says, it says it's a kingdom of priests. <laughs> it's also a kingdom of kings. That's where we are from. A holy nation. A peculiar people. You know the word peculiar is different. We're not like other people. We're not like ordinary people. You know, I like President Obama every time he says, he said, there are not many human race. Or how does he say it? There is one human race. He's trying to destroy racism with his speech. He said, you don't have the white race, the black race, and all that. You have one human race. Anyway, when it comes to the dominion mandate, there is a new race of men on earth. That's the truth. There are actually two races. The race that bears the image of the fallen Adam and those that bear the image of the second Adam. But God gave the opportunity to everyone. You know, can you imagine a nation that offers citizenship to all? That's how the kingdom of God is. So anybody excluded, excluded himself by choice. It's not God excluding people. God is not racist. God is not dividing people. You, you exclude yourself by choice. God has offered the same opportunity, the same privileges to everyone. Can you imagine U.S. Offering citizenship right to the whole world. Oh my God. Africa will end, be, will be empty by tomorrow morning. But guess what? I will stay back. I'm not one of those who are impressed with traveling to, traveling to U.S. or to the West. I respect what God has done with this country. And what God has given men wisdom to do here. But Africa right now is the untouched world in the whole world. As a man that wrote a book, he's an American. If you find, go Google the book. I'll tell you the, the title. The Fastest Billions. Google it. Buy it. Read it. The guy is writing. He's, he's from here. He's an uh, American. He's writing about the, the one place where it's so easy to make your billions. And he's showing that he's in Africa. I know because I live there. And I'm not just living there. You know, we're having dominion. America is becoming an old woman. Whose breast has been sucked. It's now flat. The resources drain. Africa is a young virgin. It's yet to be 
is an untapped world. So I teach our young people, stop running out, running away. Stay here. There's gold on the surface. You don't need to dig too, too deep to find it. It's true. It was an Indian man sitting with me in the first class. We were flying to the capital city of my country. And he was telling me, he said, he said, do you know in this your country, we pick gold in the streets? He said, why do you think Indians are everywhere? Chinese are everywhere. Why do you think with all the story they hear about Nigeria, the Americans are coming, the British are coming, but there are a lot of you here paralyzed by fear. Why do you think they are coming? He said, I just entered your country just six years. I've collected a few billions of dollars. He said, all you have to do is create value. Look at the, the poverty. Look at the problems as opportunity. Find solution and then market. It's not for people looking for something where, without offering value in exchange. It's for people who will see that every problem is a potential business. And every problem is a potential ministry. Why will you bring electricity to sell to America where there is electricity everywhere? Then you get to Africa, you see where millions of people don't have light. They are using candle in the night. Uh -huh. That's why your electric company will make you billions. Why would you want to take mobile phone to a place where everybody is saturated? And, but you get to Africa, you see where people want to talk, but they don't have... That is why. Why would you want to take rails, you know, railway system to U.S. or New York, where everything they've been used? And then you come to Africa, you see where people are still using their leg to travel miles. Then you see the purpose for your company, where you can. And, and you know, Africa just hit one billion. So you take out China, you take out India, is the third largest block. That predicting that Nigeria will soon. So many mouths to feed, many problems to solve. That's why people like us are not going anywhere. I'm created to solve problems, not to run away from problems. If you understand what the dominion mandate is. A mandate is an authorization for my higher power to carry out a particular assignment. It's an official authorization to carry out an assignment. It can be on behalf of a government. It can be, be on behalf of God, deity. It can also be on behalf of a company. <laughs> Usually, it's hardly used with a company. A mandate, that word is usually used with a government. It's a kingdom term. If the U.S. government gives you a mandate to go around all the high schools in the U.S., and introduce entrepreneurial studies or to introduce technical education or the mandate might even be to go around all the schools and stop the spread of drugs and then they give you an authorization in some cases in Africa we pass a law the legislators will pass a law to back that particular initiative is a mandate. You have a document that backs you up. You have an authority that backs you up. So a mandate has three components. First of all, I said it's an authorization to carry out a particular function or assignment on behalf of the government. A mandate has three. In this particular case, now we're talking about the authorization God gave us to carry out some assignment on earth. On his behalf. What exactly is that assignment? God created the universe. But he chose not to rule this earth directly. He transferred the rulership. 
the government, the management, the stewardship of the planet Earth to man. As far as God is concerned, this earth is in the hand of man. Psalm 115 verse 16 and 17. Show that before we... Psalm 115 verse 16 and 17. The heaven, the heavens, even the heavens belongs to the Lord. Or this translation said, are the Lord's. So God is in charge of the heavens. But the earth had he given to what? The children of men. That's, that's what we're talking about. So in the gospel today, we talk about going to heaven. In my father's house, there are many mansions. You only stay in there for seven years. Because heaven was not created for man. It was for angels and for God. Man is created for the earth. That's one of the reasons they gave us this earthen suit, this physical body. That's why in the plan of redemption, God planned a resurrection where we're going to get back another body after death. So we can come back here. If we are to stay in heaven, the people are already in heaven. They don't need a body, another body to stay in heaven. Paul the apostle, Peter the apostle, and all of the saints are there. They don't need a body to stay in heaven. But to come back and rule with Christ a thousand years and rule forever, they have to get back a body. The earthen suit is meant for this place. God made you humus beings. Human being. Humus. As a man, a spirit being covered with earth suit so that you can function here. You can live here. The heavens belongs to the Lord. The earth he has given to the children of men. I think I need to backtrack a little again. One more time. You know, because this is the foundation. If you... I've not even started working on it, but... Because if you, if you make, if you jump at the foundation, you create more problems for people when they start moving up. The foundation is so important. It's so important. Many people don't have the dominion image. The dominion image is the divine nature. That image of loyalty. Many don't have it. Many people are carrying rejection. Many are carrying wounds. Many have that image distorted. And in some cases, completely destroyed. And that's why demonic forces are now playing with human lives. That's why many people are in bondage. First, okay, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. Let me, let me show you the scripture. This New Testament way of saying the same thing. If you don't find the word kingdom, you find this word that we are actually kings. One of the ways that... Now, these are believers that have gone to heaven. We normally call them 24 elders. That's what the Bible also calls them. Twelve of them are from the New Testament. Twelve are from the Old Testament. I hope you know, before Jesus came, there were no 24 elders in heaven. You will not find any prophet who has seen the throne room and saw 24 elders. Isaiah saw the Lord. Ezekiel saw different people had encounters with God. Nobody ever saw 24 elders until Jesus rose from the dead. Even the ones from the Old Testament did not go to heaven and they were not ruling with God until Jesus rose from the dead and took captivity captives. And then, as the, his 12 apostles started dying, by the end of the first century era of the church, they all joined him in heaven to sit around. To, so 12 are looking after the old covenant, 12 are manning the new covenant. God runs the government of 12. We call it the G12.
This redeemed man from the earth. I want you to see what they are saying in heaven. I don't want you to get to heaven only to realize that you are a king. And you regret not ruling here. Thank God we have a thousand years coming. But God did not say you start ruling when you get to a thousand years. No. The Bible says we are to reign in life. <laughs> and the song, a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book. You see, they are talking to Jesus. They are worshiping him here to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and had redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation, there will be no people group, no language spoken among men from where you will not have people who will make the rapture. There will be no kindred. As a matter of fact, can I pause here and show you the vision that has recruited me into mission? God's global vision for the nations of the earth. Show it to them, Revelation uh, 7, verse 19. Let me just be sure I got the verse right. Uh, 7, verse 9. Revelation 7, 9. 7, 9, not 19. <laughs> After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude. These are the people that made the rapture. A great multitude which no one could number. So, do you think that is thousands? Absolutely no. We can number thousands. Do you think that's millions? Absolutely no. We can number. Do you think that's billions? I think that's from where you start. Before you look at the crowd and say, this, no one can number. You know, you also have to understand that at the time of John, that's 2,000 years ago, the word billions have not been created. They don't know how to count beyond a particular level. You understand what I'm saying? So if we are 7 billion, a couple of billions are going to be there at the rapture. I'm glad I'm one of them. Are you, are you, are you one of them? It's not there you will know. It's now that you will know. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? If you're an American citizen, you know now. If you're a Canadian citizen, you know now. You don't say, eh, no, when the government comes to my house to check paper, that's when I'll know. No. I know I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Can I hear you say amen? But I'm not just a citizen. I'm a crown prince. I'm a king. Yes. Jesus is too much. In order to be king of kings, he has to make all of us kings first. If not, he will be king of citizens. So, Jesus does not want to rule citizens. He doesn't want to rule slaves. He wants to rule kings. I said this in Africa, and somebody said to me, Jesus is king of kings? Is that what you're saying, pastor? I said, yes. He said, if we become kings, who will be the citizens? I said, didn't you hear that we are going to reign with him a thousand years? There will be natural human beings as citizens. The Bible says when they are a hundred years old, they will die. That's the ones that are wicked will die, and it will be like they, are, they died the day they were born. A hundred years then will look like one day. People, natural men, will live for up to a thousand years. We that are ruling with Christ, who have received the resurrection, are immortal. So they were wondering if Jesus is the one governing the kings, who will the kings govern? Ordinary men. There will be ordinary men on earth. Oh. There will be ordinary men in their billions. That's why the Bible says we are going to rule the world with a rod of iron. What that means is discipline. Because those ordinary men are not born again. Will catch you raping somebody. Will catch you practicing some of this lawlessness in America. These extreme ones that was not part of the America, American dream. These are 
the new fabrications now that people have created. Sleeping with animal or whatever will catch you. You cannot do that in the new earth because we're going to be everywhere. We're also in billions. We're everywhere. We're in the customs. We're in the navy. We're in the army. We're in the schools. But guess what? I'm not going to be running school. I'm going to be running nations. You know what I'm working is to run the continent of Africa. I'm going to contend with uh, Rehabonke and people like that over the continent of Africa. Jesus will decide who comes and who is on uh, who. He will decide that. I, I'm not going just for Nigeria. Because it's what you died for that you will rule over. It's what you suffered for. It's what you labored for. A lot of believers now have no sense of purpose in their life. It's what you paid for that you're going home with. So I'm glad that people like Paul didn't venture into mainland Africa. I, there would be a big problem for somebody like me. Thank God he stopped with not. Uh -huh. Even the not where he labored has become Islamic again. Somebody else, another new generation Paul needs to emerge. Somebody needs to rise up and reclaim America. And that day, they will bring you and Jonathan Edwards and all those great founding fathers that championed the cause of the kingdom. And Jesus will decide who is the foundation and who is the building. He will give them the job, the reward that goes with foundation. Because they were the apostles that brought Christianity to this nation. And he will give you the reward that goes with beauty. I'm not going to be a decoration in God's house, a paint, a fitting on the wall. No way! That's, this is what is driving me, in case you don't know. You need to get a vision of where you are. There is a dominion mandate, a global plan that God has for the nations. And your role in it. You remember, I actually stopped somewhere. I say a mandate has three components. I think you need to write it down. There are three components to a mandate, and we left it hanging. Let's clean up that one before we look at this scripture. <laughs> a mandate has three components. The first is an assignment. A mandate always begins with a responsibility, not authority. The second is authorization or authority, power. A mandate has, number one, assignment. Number two, authority. Then number three, resources. You cannot pursue a mandate and be poor because you will have more resources than you can ever work to generate available for you. When you do the king's business, the king pays the bill. Nobody does government work from his own purse. The category A workers are the ones that work for government, not the ones that work for your company. The highest, <laughs> the category A workers, like in America now, I think people in the U.S. Army are part of it. Then you talk about those in the Congress, those who work in the government, or like in the White House, in the executive arm, and then, of course, in the judicial arm. You have to them demo before you talk about any other person in this country. The best provisions that U.S. as a republic can provide, whether it's security, whether it is water, whether it is electricity, these are the ones that will get it first. If there is going to be a war and some nuclear stuff is going to explode in this country, they will remove President Obama first. They will remove the members of the Congress first. They will remove the people working in the White House first. They will remove those after them all before they think about you citizens. You need to join the government of God. That's the point I'm trying to make. You are now a citizen of the kingdom, but I'm inviting you to join God's government and be part of what God is doing on the earth. So a mandate has three components. An assignment, 
authority and resources. And the resources are more than wealth. Who knows you might get there. For example, human resources are part of it. If I did not obey that divine mandate, I will never get you as my mother in Canada. My world will be so small. I just came back from Middle East Mission Conference. We held it in Dubai. I'm, I'm, you know, I have 12 people I'm mentoring now. One of them is a medical doctor from Pakistan. He's my son. He wants to be in the ministry. He is a trained doctor. He's been practicing. But now, he ha the mandate he has, his eyes open. And he sees that God wants to use him to reach the nation of Pakistan. I have another guy I'm mentoring from, not Af African nation of Sudan. I have people from India. I have people from China. We, when I got to the conference, it was a mixture of people from everywhere. Now, these are the ones I was able to, because later when I finished in my hotel room, I turned my hotel room to hold a, a meeting into the night. With these ones who wanted mentorship. How would I have met that man from Pakistan? If I did not obey, when they fly for camp meeting, I'm told that sometimes it's a, a day and a half or two days journey, really, two days journey to come to Nigeria for, you know, it's amazing. A mandate has an assignment. That's the first thing. If you will carry out this, you have to embrace a higher calling. You have to embrace a life that is beyond yourself. There's a dimension to your life that is not just about working and earning a living. God created you to influence your world. Starting with that nation where you, you are born or where you live. There's a dimension to your that is more than just going to buy a car, buy a good house and be paying mortgage for 30 years. That's not how a Prince Charles thinks. A baby was just born, I think we were in Europe when the baby arrived or something like that. The whole world was celebrating CNN, royal baby. The day you were born again, there was a party in heaven that a royal baby was born. But the issue is, do you know? Do you know who you are? That baby is not the normal baby. It's not a normal child in UK that just goes to work 5 to 8 in the evening and just earn a living. You know, the day you buy one mortgage and you're going to pay for 25 years, you come to church, you get, praise the Lord. You don't know what the Lord has done for me. We were able to finally put a down payment for a house. What are you talking about? The person that should own the stuff is talking about renting it. Read your Bible. He you said, all things are yours. Read your Bible. He you said, the world is yours. Please show it to them. It's 1 Corinthians 3. Let them see that one. All things are yours. You don't understand how uh, with this message, we are picking poor people that are begging in the streets. And the message pushes them. Look at the, a young man that came for camp meeting. He met me in Dubai. This, this my, in that trip, this guy met me. I think he gave his testimony. I don't know if you heard it, if it's the section where you, you know. This guy borrowed 15,000 to get to camp meeting. Now, 15,000 naira in Nigeria is um, like what in dollars? Eh? $100. That is all the gentleman is worth. He borrowed it. Hundred dollars, everything. If you were in camp meeting, just to come to that camp meeting. And he said, he, he saw me when I nailed down to pray for people. There was a particular time, I can't even remember. He said, it was when he saw me kneel down, he got up from there and ran to the front. And according to him, 
he came there to give one billion towards a project a mission project in africa he said when he finished nilinda he asked himself are you crazy are you and when he left commit six weeks after he hit a contract of six million that's the testimony i'm hearing this testimony i met him the guy saw the advert on the internet that i was going to do and and entered a flight to come there he used the opportunity to do some shopping but he said he was saying it with his mouth that he, he came here just because he heard that i was coming to that country the guy that can't afford now he has a contract of six million so the mo- they paid him about half so he can go and execute he runs and redeems that one million and when he did he was still trying to do the one he was given and he hit a contract of 26 million this is a baby in dominion mandate this is a baby baby dominion the guy is just a beginner when he buys his car buys his house and all those kind of things and now you know plans his life to get married and all those stuff he said how does that happen he was asking me pastor this is like magic how do you go from zero to a millionaire and he said between camp meeting and july because i just came from dubai i think about two weeks or something i'm not, not sure you know between camp meeting and july is just about four months how does that happen i said royalty comes with wealth you are born into it you just need to grow they send you to school so you can develop your senses to be able to manage your estate the baby that was just born has already got a title they call him his royal highness prince the fourth component of dominion mandate has nothing to do with here is after you have exhausted your lease adam was given six seven thousand years lease he lost it to satan after you have exhausted your lease you know when america conducts an election obama gets a four years lease to exercise the power of the presidency of united states that presidency will be there with or without you but after you exhaust your lease the fourth company now kicks in is called accountability that's why there will be judgment seat of christ for all of us to go and give account how we manage god's estate how we manage god's money how we manage god's time how we manage the life that he gave us what we did with it and during that time some people are going to be disgraced they're going to live with shame some will be moved into a higher level of dominion and influence now if you study the garden of eden it was just seven years and there was only one test for adam during these seven years don't eat that tree that tree was a symbol to show that while you exercising authority over the whole of creation that tree reminds you that you are subject to a higher power which will judge you when it's all over and if you pass this exam you'll be moving to a higher realm of influence and part of what god had in mind is adam will be moved to immortality among other things but he goes ahead and rebels against god and he loses his estate man fell from dominion the obedience of second adam is what brought you and i into this mandate one more time his death and sacrifice on the cross so that's what the elders you know okay you, you, you're showing them therefore let no man glory in men for all things are what now give me the next verse whether paul or paul or Cephas, the world everyone said the world the world is yours anyway in case you don't know what he means by paul and apollos he's saying that it pastor david is also your property ministry gifts are gifts to the church 
your property is a gift to you. Your pastor is a gift to you. When God raises a man and anoints him, realize that that anointing on this man, God put it there for my sake. So what you have to understand now, how do I tap what this man is carrying? The key is learning to honor the vessel that carries that oil. And this honor is not, is not just pastor, I respect you, I honor you. It's to honor it even in finances. When he said, honor the Lord with your substance. When you do that, when you sow into an anointing, the anointing comes on you. You receive the benefits of it. When you sow into a man that is blessed, that blessing comes on you. If a man is equipped with gifts of healing, God put him there for your sake. Not for his sake. Nobody's anointed for his sake. All things are yours. All things are yours. Stop talking about what you don't have because everything you need is available. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? The ones that are not in you, God put it around you. Can I hear you say amen? All things are yours. The world is yours. The world is yours. Show it again. Verse, verse 22. Look at it. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, the world included. Things present, things to come. Life or death. Stop fearing Mr. Death. He only has one job in your life. When you are through with purpose to escort you to eternity. Not to terminate your journey. He has no right to do that. Start seeing life and death as servants. Just like you should see money. Stop fearing it. Don't fear life. Don't fear death. Don't fear angels. They are your servants. You are a king. I say you are a king. Revelation chapter 5. So you see where the dominion Monday starts. And all of us who are in the ministry, take note. You have to start by constructing the image. That's where people have their biggest problem. Many people don't believe. They don't know who they are. They don't know who God has made them. And when you now tell them to exercise authority, they can't. You say, go and take China. Ah, I cannot take it. All. Go and take Louisiana. Go and take Texas. Ah. The territory intimidates them. Meanwhile, God says you can rule the whole world. The reason is that you have not constructed the primary thing. The foundation is that image. Get the image of a king back inside them. Get the DNA of God right inside them. And you build with the word. What we build in ministry is human life. And what you build with is with the word. If you don't teach it right, people will not turn out right. You build with revelation knowledge. If you get the image right, there is no limit to what your people can do. There is no limit to what they can accomplish. Don't be the type of pastor that damaged the image of God in people. Don't do that. Treat God's people like royalties. You become a pastor of kings. It's better to pastor kings than to pastor slaves. When you finish, they beg you for money for transport. When you start raising kings, they will start buying car for you as a pastor. The people will rise and build. Don't pastor slaves. But everybody comes slaves set free from Egypt. Reprogram their consciousness. Reprogram their spirit man. Lay hold of this software. You will thank God. Ministry is interesting if you understand the technology. If you understand the technology. It's a system. If you understand it. It's an impute output cycle. Be careful what you are putting in people because it will finally come out. Put the kingdom mindset in them. 
Put a dominion mindset in them. There is nobody God created to be a failure. Let me make this point clear. The dominion mandate is the universal human right God gave to every man. I know about the UNN, United Nations created human rights. To the point that they tarry with the dominion mandate, I agree with it. Because when you tell me the right to freedom of speech, who should have freedom of speech? The king should have freedom to speak. The right to life. Oh, the king should have right to life. The right to own a property. The right to engage in a productive venture and, and, and make create wealth. Who should have that? Is the universal human right. There is no man God created to be a slave. There's, because every man is made in the image of God. There is no man God created to be poor. There is no man God created to be a failure. We see damaged products everywhere. That's why the dominion mandate has an assignment. And that assignment is partnering with God to recover his creation. Both human and otherwise. But primarily the human creation. For the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. If you don't understand this message, you don't understand Dominion City as a whole. And you don't understand God's plan. First, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. You know, that's where we, we post. Now, the brethren that has gone to heaven, the 12 representing the New Testament church and the 12 representing the Old Testament, both covenant, they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book to open the seals thereof they were singing to jesus they were worshiping him for you were slain and has redeemed us to god by your blood out of every kindred every tongue and people and nation you remember at this point i called revelation 7 verse 9 why don't you look at it one more time just to let you know that is the vision that has recruited me that's the assignment Every one of us is to hook up with God to see that vision come to pass. That's God's global vision. And that vision is what is keeping the rapture from happening. Because until God sees this completed, he is going to ask that archangel to sound the trumpet. And I, after this, I behold, lo, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations and kindreds and people, and language the last word tongues is language how many tongues do they speak in canada how many languages do we have in in canada you have french you have english they still speak german and all those ones and you know apart from french and english which are the official one i'm even told that they are indians who were the original guys in the land and those indians also have languages they are not speaking just one language you know the same thing with us here you know so but in my country just nigeria you have over three 250 languages and god said of all the language language and people groups there will be people to represent them in the rapture as long as there is any people group not reached with the gospel you will not have that trumpet sound you see where the assignment section of the mandate comes from we have to partner with god to see his vision come to pass now somebody asked me back home he said what if adam did not sin will there be an assignment i say yes there is no mandate without an assignment after you are given an assignment then you are given authority then with that authority you are given all kinds of resources that's why God gives you money. Money first has a purpose. So the guy asked me, what if man did not fall? What would be the assignment? I said, the assignment is that Adam is to be fruitful, multiply until he replenishes the earth. If we did not fall, you and I will have to join that program 
to help saturate the earth with the God kind of seed. But now man has fallen. Our job is to go and redeem fallen man so that the billions will be in the kingdom. Not billions going to hell. But that's not the only part of the assignment in the dominion mandate. One component of the assignment deals with human beings and human lives. The redemption of man. The other component, remember he said, have dominion over the earth. Deals with the earth. Governing the resources. Taking charge. Ruling. Subduing the earth. So, financial dominion in your nation it's not for the people out there. It's for you. Political dominion is for you. Spiritual dominion is for you. Social dominion is for you. So whether it is dominion in the entertainment industry, dominion in the, you know, in the area of intellectualism, innovation, and all of that, or dominion in the financial sector, is for God's children. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? If you were still, a, you know, a few more, I don't know if you have interest in entertainment. I will have commissioned you now to go and contest for Miss US or something or go on. But who said even now you cannot contend in the entertainment industry? It's not about being a Miss US or Miss something. There are movies that can pay you, you know, you can, you can be churning in $100 million every year. $200 million every year. Who told you that the money is for people out there? It's time for God's people to wake up and realize that the earth, the world belongs to you. Can I hear you say amen? When you, have, you finish with me this weekend, if you see the kind of things you're going to do in the next 12 months, if you see how much you will accomplish in the next 12 months, one guy told me, I wish I knew that Christianity was like this. I would have been born again 30 years ago. I wasted my time, my life. I didn't know that church is like this. I said, because many pastors are not fully trained. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. So you see, there is a mission. God did not bring it to America to go and become a slave of man-made systems. He brought you here to implement the kingdom in this place. You are called to preach the gospel. You are going to be more powerful than people like me. Days are coming. People will be wondering, who is this guy? Where did he come from? Everyone lift up your hands. Lord, what is the assignment for which you created me? I'm not just an ordinary person. Open my eyes to see it. Open my eyes to see it. Eyes. Open my eyes to see it. Show me my sphere of dominion. Show me the nation you want me to take. Show me the territory you want me to dominate. In Jesus' name. You may be seated for a while. You know. Let me kind of round this up somehow now remove verse 9 focus on verse 10 i want them to see that as i round up and they cried with a loud voice saying no 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 in verse 9 they cried saying you are worthy to receive all of the things open the scroll and the reason the ultimate reason they gave one reason in verse 9 what was the reason for you were slain to redeem us to god but in verse 10, they give two other reasons. So there are three reasons for worship in heaven. When Jesus is worshipped, three reasons. First reason, for his sacrifice on the cross that brought us redemption. But there are two other reasons after that. He said, because you have made us to our God. What? Kings and priests. And we shall reign in the earth. But let me tell you, the point I'm trying to make is that it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter the kind of environment that brought you up. It doesn't matter whether your father is alive or dead. It doesn't matter whether they gave birth to you out of wedlock or not. There is a royal calling mandate on your life. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? 
God wants to use you to do mighty things far beyond what your mind can imagine as at this time. There are things we can say, there are things we cannot say. But this season, the anointing of Daniel is here. The anointing of Joseph is here on the earth. The anointing of David is here again on the earth. God is looking for kings. He will deploy into those environments where pastors hardly go. Because the issue, you see, priests deal, deal with the pulpit and the altar. The kings can go beyond where the altar cannot go. The kings take ministry into the government house. They take ministry into the marketplace. They take ministry into schools. They take ministry into the company. They take ministry. All God's people need is training. Training for reigning. Many of the Bible schools have curriculum for developing priests. We don't know how to develop kings. The Bible says we are to reign on the earth. We don't know how to develop kings. The kings take ministry into the football pitch. The kings take ministry into the hospitals. The kings take ministry beyond the church world. They take it beyond the altar and the pulpit. They create economic pulpit. They create internet pulpit. They create political pulpit. Do you know that in partnership with a professor that he used to live in this country he, and taught in this Atlanta for 30 years. In partnership, we floated a political party for my country. We are planning to float another one because we use that one to learn. At the completion of my training now in government, I'm doing some courses in, in government and international relations. We are floating another political party. Pastor, are you going to be a politician? No. I know who I am. But I'm called, this ministry is called to father kings and priests. That's our calling. To raise kings and priests. People who change their world. There is something bigger. There is something much more than what you have seen that is coming. This weekend is your weekend of encounter with God. You're going to come face to face with your destiny. God is going to expand your world and expand your vision and expand your enlarge your heart. You have this seed of royalty. You have this seed of dominion. It's in you. You have God's nature in you. He made you in his image. You are capable of much more than what you are doing now. You are far bigger than who, who, what you are right now. You have far more resources than what you are controlling right now. Your world is much bigger than what it is now. God means business with you. God is not joking with you. God is a businessman. He's serious. I was born in a village in Africa. Not even in town. A life that is submitted to Jesus. That is submitted to God in obedience. There is nothing he cannot do. A man that will say yes to God that is willing. God does not look for ability. He's looking for availability. God is not looking for the equipped. He's looking for those who will say yes to equip them. Each time I go before God in my knees, I cry. He said, I have not even started anything with you. 
is the God of the universe. He's an, a big God. He's an awesome God. Have dominion over the earth. 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 You have a global mandate. You have a global mandate. You're not going to die the way you are now. Your destiny has not even started. You have a global mandate. Nations are waiting for you. Nations are waiting for you. Nations are waiting for you. You have a, a global mandate. You have a global mandate. Some of us are beginning to build businesses. That business is supposed to go around the world because you're going to create wealth of nations to be able to drive a global mandate. You have a global mandate. You are bigger than where you are now. You are bigger than where you are now. You are bigger than what you are now. I hear the Lord say, you are bigger than where you are now. He said, link up with me. Surrender to me. I want to move you into a larger place. I want to move you into a larger place. I hear him say, I've come down this weekend to expand your world. To expand you. You're bigger than what you are now. You're bigger than where you are now. You're much bigger than what you have now. You're much bigger than what you're doing now. There is greatness inside of you because it's the God DNA that you are carrying. 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 You cannot be contained in that small environment. You cannot be contained in that small territory. You cannot be contained. Break that limitation. Break it off. Break it off. Throw off the chains. You cannot be bound. You are a mighty man. Break off the chains. You cannot be bound. Your freedom is inside you. Recognize it. And the chains outside will fall off. You are carrying my image. You are carrying my DNA. Said the Lord. You are the one I've sent as a deliverer. You are the one I've sent as the answer to the problems of nations. Break off that mental limitation. Break it off, said the Lord. Break off that physical bondage. Break it off. It cannot hold you down. Will you recognize my voice calling you to a higher life? There's a higher dimension for you. There's a higher realm for you. Come on, Open the eyes of your people, Lord. Remove the veils. Tear the limitations off. I rebuke every veil to be torn. Let the people see. Carry them in divine transportation. Let them see the new world that you have for them. Let them see the new future that you have for them. Let them see the destiny that you have for them. Kambra labo shokabaya labaka. We command the walls of limitations to fall. We command the walls of Jericho to go down. We command the walls of mental limitations to go down. We command the walls of emotional limitations to go down. May the robe of loyalty come upon your life. May the mantle of leadership come upon your life. May the anointing for your ministry come upon your life. May the mantle for your dominion, the dominion mantle come upon your life. May the scepter to rule step into your hand. Let the anointing rest upon your life. Let the scepter, the rod of authority come back into your hand. You're born to rule. You're born to rule. You're born to rule. You're born to rule. You are God's voice of liberty. You are God's voice of freedom. You are God's voice of deliverance. 
Tabrolobo shike brolobo. I call the giant in you to a match. I call the glory hidden inside you to a match. I call the treasure hidden inside you to a match. I call it forth. Kambrolabo loko bomo. Yambo gobo heba. Zemilobo komori baba heya. Zendirik bayoko brelanas. Lumunumomo. Komoro bole heba. Zemilo komoyo bohina mos. Bamia kuroso bandia karas. Loko yo momo. Hakiam brosuki. Fantara pusaka. Hinkro to see. He broshoka. Let the obstacle before you give way for your destiny to emerge. Let the limitations you've been facing give way. It's time to move forward. The Lord said, I should tell you, it's time to move forward. It's time to step out of your comfort zone. I have something bigger waiting for you. Come on, Roboshi, come on, Koshimo, Hanyama Kiraba, Sombre de Kobojaka, Surulomahi Kambo, Sokambayaka, Zamondo Rekabashuke, Lobanko Borko Sombe. Have you been impacted by this message? Please share your experience with Pastor David Ogweli. Email address Dominion Image Media at yahoo.com or call 0803-435-7959, 0803-590-9900.